HD Nation, Zach Edwards here for another, actually, no, our first Minnesota Monday with podcast. Wait a second, what? This is our actual first podcast that we're producing just for you guys. This is a sneak peek of all the other podcasts that we're going to be doing. It's actually a unit from our curriculum. So his, Hunt the Past, which is owned by Historical Thomas, but HuntThePast.com is the website, and that's our curriculum. This is an audio version of that curriculum, and we're going to be doing all of it and producing it for you so you can actually hear it in podcasts. But we're starting off very small. We're going to see if this is worth it, if people can get behind it. If they can, we'll continue. If they can't, sorry to say, we won't continue because there's no funny behind it because we're only going to do things that the customer likes. And so if the customer likes it, we will continue. And all that means, if you want to be the, one of the people that support this, or, or that you like it and you want to be able to um, show your support behind it, all it is is registering on huntthepast.com, I think it's slash registry. So if you have register at the end, that is going to get you, and I think there might be a slash afterwards. I'll, I'll put the link in the, below, but if you can give us $5 a month, donate $5 a month, we will actually be able to produce this. We're looking only at 20 to 30 people, and we could fund one of these a week. So stay tuned. I'm not going to, uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you the first podcast. It's on Mesoamerica. I know you're going to enjoy this one, and I know you're going to want more. We're going to bring up everything from Christopher Columbus, and this is the complete story, not just what some people want to tell you about Christopher Columbus. Um, and then everything from America to Vespucci and, and all their connections. I mean, I am so enjoying this as I produce our first workbook, which is basically the American, American history to go along with a podcast, to go along with units. So there's everything that you might need. We're producing it for your history adventure through school. So again, without further ado, here is our first episode, Mesoamerica. Thank you so much for joining us. Mesoamerica encompasses everything from central Mexico to the borders of Panama. Millennia of human habitation have left this place rich in cultural heritage. Maya, Aztec, and ruins from earlier peoples dot the landscape, beautifully preserved for the tourist onslaught. These cities have awed and intimidated for centuries after their fall from glory. Imagine what once was and glean an inkling of Mesoamerica's storied past. Isolated from the rest of the world, Mesoamerica developed unique systems of governance, religion, war, and learning. And yet, in many respects, these accomplishments are eerily similar to the realms of the Old World. Great powers came and went, and culturally homogenous people warred and slaughtered one another for the honor and prestige of their cities. All while making enormous strides in mathematics, architecture, engineering, and calendrical systems. As elsewhere, Powerful civilizations emerged, connecting disparate groups through war and trade. In the case of Mesoamerica, these were the Almecs, emerging to attain an empire stretching across the region in the millennia before Christ. Military conquest was limited due to the scarcity of food available for campaigning armies and the distances marching men could travel over prolonged periods. Almec armies were first to utilize weapons for war and first to organize themselves for expansion through war, sowing the seeds for later peoples who came after them. The proliferation of Almec ideas, architecture, religion, and learning gave Mesoamerica a common cultural heritage while maintaining certain distinctive characteristics among individual peoples. The Almec people thrived throughout the region with nearly 18,000 citizens until they met their abrupt and mysterious end. Whether by war or by famine, no one knows why this ancient civilization nearly vanished. All that can be known is that their people disappeared without a record of their last days. When Maya cities began to emerge nearing the end of the Almec period, they never achieved a singular unity, but rather acted much like Greek poleis, or cities, of the 5th and 4th centuries BCE. Storied cities, like Tikal and Kalakmul, blossomed into major regional powers at the height of the classical Maya period, 
250 to 950 CE. Home to tens of thousands, these sprawling urban centers suffered from the intermittent warfare so common between Maya city-states. Military exhaustion compounded by recurring droughts ensured the decline of the Maya by the end of the 10th century. However, their achievements in transmitting the Almec heritage and progressing forward on their own brought continuity to the Mesoamerican learning. Chief among such learning was the mathematical use of zero in their numeric system and calendars. The discovery of zero, mathematician Tobias Danzig proclaimed, was one of the greatest single achievements of the human race. Independent of the Babylonians or Indians, the Almec and Maya seem to have used it as a placeholder and baseline for their calendars. Whether they were the first to use zero as zero is debatable, and really doesn't matter because they used it for a purpose different from Eurasia. Still, the fact that peoples isolated from one another by tens of thousands of miles began to make use of that core value of mathematics within a few centuries of one another is extraordinary. 600 years after Maya civilization fell from its highest pinnacle, newcomers from Europe showed up on the outskirts, completely unaware of what they'd sailed into and not having any clear understanding of the vast complexities waiting for them in the interior. Spaniards brought the horse and wheeled transport to the Americas where none had been before. Everyone walked or were carried on the shoulders of others, bearing their burdens by the strength of their backs. The lack of wheeled transport and horses for men like Cortez and his troops, who came from a world where the horse and wheel had been in use for a long time, proved to them the backwardness of the people they encountered. But terrain which morphed so quickly from lowland to mountain to jungle proved ideal ground for footborne transport. When the great cities of the Mexican interior were reached, however, the Spaniards gaped as if in a daze. Elsewhere, whenever they sighted the abandoned cities of the Maya or the mountain-carved palaces of the Inca, Spanish writers were unstinting in their praise. Mesoamerica was old and scarred by the time of Cortes. Like elsewhere, it had seen great powers rise and fall and newcomers take their place. The Spaniards were different only in that they came from outside the Mesoamerican sphere, bringing with them new diseases for which there was no immunity. In numbers, they were small, but found willing allies in the plethora of Mesoamerican groups, only too willing to deal a blow to their hated rivals and overlords. In this case, the Aztec of Tenochtitlan, Without Mesoamericans, Spanish conquistadors, which were few in number, would have been shattered. If you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you tomorrow, actually. Take care, bye.